Let's have a look at StyleGAN 3. StyleGAN 3 generates very, very realistic looking faces by being trained on data sets with many, many faces. This was a very popular form of generative AI for images and still remains popular, though Stable Diffusion is definitely getting the spotlight. And we'll get into Stable Diffusion uh, very soon in this course. But let's have a look at how you use a GAN, a Generative Adversarial Neural Network. The original paper on GANs by Ian Goodfellow was able to generate synthetic data by being trained on data that included people's faces, as you can see here, animals, as you can see here, and then also digits. These are not real digits, not real people, not real animals. All of these certainly don't look, this gets a lot more impressive as we get to StyleGAN 3. But the way that a generative adversarial neural network works is you have a training set that contains images or whatever, some sort of synthetic data that some sort of data that you want to become synthetic. And those are fed into a neural network that is called the discriminator. And the discriminator is trained to learn if the input image is a real image or if it's a fake image it learns to tell the difference between the two. On the other side, there is another neural network that is learning to generate images based on random seeds. These seeds are just vectors that are just randomly generated and it generates images and those are also fed into the discriminator. So the discriminator is more and more learning how to tell the difference between a real image or a fake image. So at the very, very end, you have, you have a generator that is very good at generating realistic looking in images from random seed values. And you also have a discriminator that is pretty good too at telling the difference between real and fake images, which could be used as some sort of an anomaly detection, perhaps. So we're gonna look at how we can use StyleGAM to generate these random faces. These are some faces that I actually generated with StyleGAN 2, although StyleGAN 3 looks very, very similar to these, maybe slightly higher quality. And you can now then even need less images to actually trade it on due to the StyleGAN ADA, which was added because it used image augmentation. So you can see you've got a picture of a cat here. They'll rotate the cat, they'll mess with the background, other sorts of things. This creates additional data that the neural network can be trained on. So you don't need quite as many. Image augmentation, we saw it previously for training convolution neural networks, but it's a very, very important technique because this allows you to have a lot of additional data that you can train your neural network on. You'll see some of the faces here generated by StyleGAN. Most of these look pretty reasonable. How you can typically tell a StyleGAN face is the background would be very blurry and kind of whimsical. You're never sure exactly what you're looking at in the background. I mean, photographers go for similar effect by messing with the f-stop, but it's not always ideal. So if there's more than one person in the image, it will learn these kind of strange mutated twin sort of effects. You can see the other person here. It's also not particularly good with fingers, nor is Stable diffusion, as we'll see. So you can see here, the model had her face, or hands up near her face, and you can see the number of fingers really don't always, always match. So here, we're gonna see how you can generate some of these random faces of your own. This code here that you run will install the needed library so that you can actually make use of StyleGAN. It will install what's needed and it does require an NVIDIA type GPU. So this is why I do recommend for the class if you want to run it in Google Colab, that's probably going to be your easiest approach. And you can see we've downloaded StyleGAM 3 and those are the files that it has. Probably the easiest way to get to StyleGAM is to run it right from the command line. And I give you some of the commands that you can do that here. And in this case, I am generating seeds within the range 66,600 to 6625. And you can see it goes through and it generates all of these images. And you can see the PNGs that it generated. 
You can also run it from Python code, and this gives you a lot more powers and capabilities. I mean, I designed a Kaggle data set that my students competed on one semester using this exact sort of technique where I modified the latent vector to have glasses or to not have glasses, and then the students needed to predict if these faces had glasses or did not have glasses. And this is the, the data set to that. But here, we are going to generate from Python code. So you'll see I have a method here to display the image. I also create a generate image where you're passing in G, which is the generator, and other parameters that, that generate the determine the overall noise and other effects on the image being generated. You can also use labels with this. So you could, let's say you trained a neural network both on cats and dogs. You could pass it a label saying, I want a cat or I want a dog. Personally, I've mostly worked with single focused GANs. And as you get into stable diffusion, it, they're all very multi-purposed GANs. So, uh, they're all very, so as you get into stable diffusion, it's all very, very multi-purpose. So you can certainly train your GAN, if you're using style GAN 3, to be able to generate multiple different image types. Ideally, the images should be somewhat related. I do not know that something that, say, was trained to generate rocks and plants would, would do particularly well. This is just not much overlap. Dogs and cats both have fur, both have eyes there's potentially some value there. And here I run the code and I run it on a variety of different different data sets. I do have a few pre-trained, like I created one of my own that generates fish. And I have some links to that in the description of the video. And here you can see some of the faces that it generated. I mean, some are more realistic than others. This, this lady, her hat is sort of blending into her hair. I'm not sure what's going on with, with her outfit. And others, but it, it does it does generate these images. Now you also have a latent vector, and the latent vector is ex exactly what the name says: a series of numbers. And as you change those numbers slightly, you can you'll make small changes to to the image. If you take two latent vectors, like I did here, this guy, and then this lady here. And then I just moved using linear algebra, but basically moved from one vector to the other. You see that this person literally transforms into the other person. I suppose right here is kind of the the in between here. It's it's looking like this guy only younger, uh, but some of the features certainly. So I have a function here that I created that does this exact effect. So it moves the latent vector from one to the other. And you can put in a list of scenes that you would like to scroll between. And you can create these very cool morphine sort of effects of videos. When you run it, it goes through and it, it generates these. And you can ultimately download your, your movie that you generated. And it looks kind of something like this. As you can see, it's moving from one face to the other as those Latent vectors are basically just moving moving around uh, from point to point to point where I picked some faces that I thought looked interesting for you to morph between. So this gives you an introduction to the StyleGAN 3 and generative AI. We're going to look in the next video about how to take images that appear very old and modernize them with deoldify, which is another very interesting application of GANs. Thank you for watching the video and please subscribe and like if this was useful. Uh, subscribe so that you don't miss any of the future court uh, videos in this course.